Cats. And welcome to the Melbourne Cricket Round. My name is Robert Winston and I'm joined by the Northern Football Nepal League uh, media team, Jordan Canellish, Jared Gardner and Doug Long. Welcome boys, how are you going? Very good, great to be here. Look at this, what a setting, Rob. Oh. Pick the best setting for this. I certainly have, boys, and obviously we've just uh, witnessed the Frank Rosbrook Trophy for 2019. Uh, your thoughts, boys? Tommy Bell, runaway winner in the end with 23 votes. Uh, what's your opinions on on, um, on on the night so far? Yeah, it was a great night and some great awards given out to some quality footy and netball players. And, and Tommy Bell, a very deserving winner, has been a star for Greensboro this year. They've uh, obviously only lost the one game, and that was by less than a kick. So uh, a very talented team, and they had so many guys up the top there. But... Um, Bali's first year out of the AFL system comes down to local level and um, wins a Rosbrook, Rosbrook medal, so a great effort by Tommy. It's fair to say uh, Sam Gilmore for Heidelberg was probably the hot favourite coming into this uh, uh, awards night, so what do you think actually ultimately got Tom Bell over the line? Is it just simply the fact that he, was it, was it the AFL name, was it the fact that he predominantly played throughout the middle? Um, you've seen a fair bit of NFNL football this year. What do you think the, the difference? Obviously, it was only three votes in the end, so it could have gone either way. But what do you think got him over the line? He did hit a, uh, a hot patch throughout the middle of the year where he, I think he polled three votes on five different occasions uh, throughout six games in a row. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I think it's just that big body. I think he's, he's such a tough in and under midfielder, and the umpires generally do notice that. Gilmore, um, obviously a ruckman, and we love our ruckman here in the Northern Footy Netball League. but just unlucky to, to get pipped at the post there by Tommy Bell. So I think it, it was really anyone's uh, count coming up. Charlie Molyneux was one that was floated around as a big favourite and he only pulled eight votes on the night. Yeah, so yep, certainly. there are so many players who deserve to, to be right up there. And boys, obviously this is the uh, this is the media team for Saturday afternoon football live from Preston City Oval. Jordan, you've been uh, within the league for many, many years, seven years now. Uh, obviously you've uh, gone on to uh, Greener Pastures within uh, SEN, you're a professional commentator now, you're living the dream, but you've seen a lot of NFNL football over the years. Uh, Greensboro, as we just uh, mentioned, they only de lost one game all year, mm -hmm. two points at V Heidelberg, and even on that day, it was shocking conditions. It was played in the mud, the wet, um, so probably lowered the standard. They've been the standout side all year, up against the reigning premier, premier in um, West Preston. They, they were zero and six at the start of the year, on the bottom of the ladder, all the questions, everyone was saying what is going on with West, West Preston uh, at J.E. Moore Park Reserve. But here they are in a grand final. They've been the best side probably in the last 11 weeks and they're going to face a Greensboro side who basically are unformidable. Yeah, I, I, I think it's the best grand final we've got. I think um, having a, a Greensboro-Heidelberg grand final, you would have had the best two teams on the ladder, which would have been a great matchup. But I think this grand final, we've got the best story. We've got the best team this season, Greensboro, have only lost one game, as you said. Yep. The team all around the park is fantastic. We know their defence is brilliant, has been for, for the last couple of years. The midfield is hard-bodied, scores a lot of goals as well, the midfield, and the forward line is dynamic. Um, and then West Preston Lakeside, the reigning Premier. So you've got that added layer of, uh, of this game this Saturday, an added story to that. So And they're, they're a great finals team as well. They've been brilliant in the second half of the season, but they play uh, Preston City Oval really, really well. They've got those those drivers off half back. Certainly. Lots of uh, counter-attacking football. They use the open spaces really well. So it's going to be a fascinating matchup. There's there's individual matchups all across the ground, but one that I'm looking forward to is I reckon Nick Riddle will go to Ahmed Saad in oh, that whew. Preston City. That's, that's a that's a yeah. finger licking contest. Certainly, in that, yeah. In that forward fifty, that's going to be that's going to be fantastic. And boys, uh, can we get a tip for the the final? Uh, obviously, of the year in Division One, Doug. Uh, what's your tip for Greensboro v West Preston? I'll go for Greensboro by 20 points. And Jared? I'm going to go for Greensboro, but I think it'll be a lot closer. I think it'll be about just over a goal. Okay, and to the main man here? Uh, I'm going Greensboro. I tipped them at the start of the season, so I have to, <laughs> have to <laughs> he did. Them, he, so, did yeah. he did say that. Uh, fantastic, mate. Good a margin? Um, I don't know. I don't really know which way it'll go. <laughs> I'll say three goals just to be sort of still on the fence, but yeah, I think Greensboro. Yeah, for hopefully my... Hopefully close one. For mine, Greensboro, by, I think they're going to win it comprehensively. I think 35 points is a fair margin. Now, look, that, that comes off the NFNL season for 2019. We'll go through quickly, boys. Uh, Richmond v Geelong this weekend. Richmond went straight through 47-point victors over uh, Brisbane in the uh, qualifying final up at the Gabba two weeks ago. What's going to happen this Friday night, in your opinion? I'll start off with you, Doug. Yeah, my heart says the Cats, but I'll, I'll be, in my, my head says uh, Richmond would probably win by about three or four goals. Jared? Yeah, I, I'm the same. I'd love to see Geelong get to, get to the grand final, but 
I think you can't shake your Richmond side. I think they'll be too good. Yourself, Geordie? I, I want to see Richmond make the grand final. I, I'm not a Richmond or Collingwood supporter, but that's <laughs> that's the grand final I want to see. It'd be great for, for Melbourne. There'd be a lot of animosity. So Richmond, for me, they're a great finals team on this ground. And as uh, or more, more audience know, I'm a massive Tigers man. I'm an Inner Sanctum member. Richmond by 117 points. <laughs> uh, and we'll go to Saturday afternoon football, 4.45 p.m. Collingwood v. the Greater Western Sydney Giants. This is a huge clash. I, I think this clash is a lot closer than a lot of pundits might think. Although GWS, uh, just in recent news, have got quite a few injury concerns, plus suspensions. Toby Green going out for the one week. Silly boy that he is. Um, he did it one week, now it's, he's done it again the, the week after. So, look, despite all these factors, I'll start off with Jordy this time. How's this result going to go? Um, I reckon the Giants will play better than what most people will think. I think their finals form so far has been really good. Um, they are probably still the sleepers of the final, even though they, they showed up Brisbane a few days ago. But I, I do like Collingwood's... Um, They've got finals players, and they've got more X-Factor players in their team than what the Giants have at the moment. This is with the Giants' injuries. Uh, full squad Giants might have been a bit better, but I think Collingwood, for me, um, I'd like to see how their forward line goes. If, if Jordan Ngoi gets up and, and Jaden Stevenson, um, that could be the difference. Certainly. Uh, uh, Jared Gardner? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to say Collingwood will, will win this one, but you can't write off his GWS side. As you said, they're probably the sleeper of this finals race, and they've got guys like Jeremy Gardner who can kick a bag at will. So, I think it'll be a very close contest, but the pies will just get up. And Doug Long, your this opinion? What, yeah, this is what I call an extreme variance game. I'm a little bit concerned about both teams. There's two out of uh, the, uh, the Giants, two out of the pies. And what will determine if they can both get through uninjured and how the bottom of six of each team go? I'm picking the pies. I reckon if they don't have any injuries, they should do it. So for mine, yeah, Collingwood, I think just the fact that they're going to have the home support, um, it's at the MCG, they've had the week off. And I think both sides, that being Richmond and Collingwood, would have learned from Richmond's mistakes of last year um, against uh, when they got pumped by Mason Cox and the Collingwood Football Club <laughs> within the first half. So I think both sides will look into that psychology of sport. And for me, Collingwood, pretty easily, I think probably around the four to five goal mark. So that wraps it up the MCG tonight. That's our predictions. It's been a fantastic night here at the Frank Rosbrook Medal for 2019. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy.